So this is part two of our post-apocalyptic scene um, in Blinet Point 8. And uh, yes, so we have already made this dish. So let's go on and uh, start making these support bars. We can start by finding the original panel here. And uh, it will help us get uh, that uh, profile for those uh, bars. So I can just select this edge loop. Shift D to duplicate it and P to separate it into a different object. I can also hide uh, these bars, uh, these panels for a second. And uh, this is what we have. And uh, since it already has the modifiers, uh, it is going to help us uh, not just not, not repeat adding uh, the array modifiers and everything. So now I can just hit E to extrude this so that we get some thickness to this. And I uh, can also rotate this just a bit to have that kind of shape uh, that you see in the panel. And I think I need to extend this further down, so I'll just extrude this as well. Making sure that I follow the same shape that we have, something like that. But uh, you can see these are like, I don't know, gauges are uh, in this sh in this form and uh, the support beams in that form so what I'm going what I can do is uh, just need to let me first isolate this maybe turn off uh, the array modifier because it's confusing me a bit and uh, now if you hit ctrl T you can add triangle you can triangulate uh, the uh, the faces you have and uh, if you select everything again and uh, hit I press I twice you can insert the selected faces like that and now we can delete the selected faces to have something like that and uh, that way we can produce uh, that shape quite easily now if you add the solidify modifier we get that thickness and then when, when we add the bevel we get that let's make sure that this is shaded smooth and then we add our array and now uh, we have yeah that now just unhide or unsolo everything and uh, you can see we have our city light ready uh, but uh, we need to have more more of these in our array and uh, increasing the array count we just have them uh, we just add the extra uh, duplicates over the other dip the, the leftover duplicate so what i need to do is uh, duplicate the array controller so that i have a separate object uh, for these so that i have a separate offset target for this and a separate object for separate ob separate object target oh, oh, uh, for the, for the panels so i'm just going to duplicate this just move it uh make sure you don't move it uh just change the display to sphere so that I can have it look different uh, from uh, the array controller for the panels and uh, now if I rotate this and go to top mode go to wireframe rotate this oh I need to set this as the target of uh, the new array so maybe I should even be naming these so I can call this I'll call this gauge controller array so that I can easily find it and I'll call this gauge. Uh, gauge. Gauge. And uh, go to the array. Make sure I change, I switch this out uh, to that. And uh, let me s also change uh, the name for this to, you can hit F2 to access the object name panel. So I'll call this panel array controller now if I select the gauge controller I can rotate it to change uh, the gap between different gauges so let me rotate this okay, let me reduce first reduce the array count so that I can easily see how many I'm, I'm dealing with how many duplicates I'm dealing with so I want to reduce so for each panel I want to have two 
gauges like that so now I can increase the array count here something like that so we have that and uh, I see that uh, the inside of this is kind of intersecting uh, with uh, with the panel so I can push it out a bit in the Z axis to have something like that let's see yes so it's not intersecting or what I can do is just select this and pu push the panels inside I can just push them along their normals using alt s have something like that so that we don't have that intersect and can see that we still have something here we just pull this up just a bit like that and uh, we are good to go yeah I'll see you in next part in the next part